Hi guys, today we are going to go through the 2020 organics examination paper. Um, so um, if you've been finding my videos helpful and um, you know, subscribe if you haven't and click the thumbs up button so it gets to more people that will need more assistance for the um, upcoming examinations. So organics, one of those um, standards, one of those um, exams that people either love it or you hate it because it's just once if once you get the gist of it, it's so easy but if you're not so good at memorizing stuff it can become quite overwhelming so hopefully by the end of this video you should be okay so let's get into it first one is naming so we want to name three chloropropanamide so amide is um this is an amide c-o-n so propanamide so that means you have prop one two three um three chloro that means on the third carbon you have a cl so this carbon is by default carbon number one and then you need to go and make sure every single carbon has four bonds and every single nitrogen has three bonds okay uh, next one how do we name this so this is the c double o functional group which is in the middle so this is a ketone um, so this is called how many carbons do we have one two three four five so it's pen ten two ohm so this is a functional group for ketone um, coo is an ester so this side is a methyl group so this is methyl uh, propanoate now with naming i you know i think with my earlier videos for the 2018 examinations where i spend maybe a little bit more time on these um naming because like they only achieve questions so um but i do need to name them um so the basics are I, I do want i don't want to make this video two hours long and you know having to go through everything so just um maybe have a look at study guys if you need more help with naming because that's the f most basic part of the standard All right two methyl butanel butanel is one two three four but means four C uh, al means aldehyde so at the end you have a coh so this is carbon number one carbon number two two methyl i have a ch3 here and then just make sure every single carbon has four bonds okay so that's that next part describe and explain a chemical test to distinguish between compound b and d oh this is a bit nasty so they didn't even, so you have to go back here so we want to look at this guy and this guy all right so one is a ketone so this is a ketone and this is an aldehyde so straight away um this is where you can um, use the Tolan's reagent, the silver mirror test. You can use the Phalanx reagent. You can use a Benedict solution. You can use those very, very common reagents to do these um, because you want to. As long as, as soon as you see aldehyde, um, I would. Not, as soon as you see aldehyde, my go-to um, distinguishing test is Tolan's reagent. Tolan's reagent. All right. So, which is the silver mirror test? Silver mirror. Because if you put this um, Tolan's reagent with aldehyde, the aldehyde would oxidize into a carboxylic acid because an aldehyde is a very, very strong reductant. So it will really, really wants to oxidize. Okay. So whereas a ketone in comparison, it can't be oxidized anymore. So if you put Tolan's reagent here, it will work. If you told Tolan's reagent here, it wouldn't work. Um, so you will see the silver mirror. The silver mirror is not because of the carboxylic acid. The silver mirror is because of the Ag plus has been reduced to form silver, which is silver color. Okay, um, and obviously with the Benedict solution, failing solutions, so the, you have a different color change. But this will be my go-to reaction, and it's an oxidation reaction. So here are some examples. So if you like using failing of Benedict solutions, um, uh, Benedict's and failing solutions are all blue, um, and they are all um, they all contain Cu2+. So what the color you see is that you will see a blue color. The Cu2 plus is blue. You will that will turn into a red solid, um, red precipitate. Okay, because that's indicating that you have um, undergoing have undergone an oxidation reaction by using the failing solution. So you can use Benedict solution, uh, Benedict's um, failing solutions. They all they, they all do the same trick. Okay, so it's an oxidation reaction. They do the same reaction. Um, you just have this guy, which is the aldehyde oxidized to this guy. 
yeah so that's how you know um, or you can use Tol Tolan's reagent Tol oops Tolan's reagent works as well like I mentioned so it's quite um, quite straightforward now you see what it says here um, not can use either acidified dichromate or potassium permanganate now I personally don't want to use those because those two tend to be really strong oxidant um, and they can sometimes actually react with a lot of the chemicals that you think you know in theory that shouldn't react because they are really strong so they will actually um, deteriorate the molecule like it will just break it down um, and then shows it has a reaction even though you know it's not doing the reaction that you wanted to do so I personally would avoid using I would avoid using these to be honest um, just when you, whenever you see aldehyde Tolens reagent, silver mirror test, and hopefully down the practical. Um, I know with all the lockdowns we had this year, but Tolens reagent is one of the really memorable ones. You can look it up on YouTube, like just type in silver mirror test. You can see some really fascinating um, silver mirror experiments. Okay. Next one, uh, we want to. What are we doing here? Devise a reaction scheme to convert one chlorobutane to butanoic chloride. All right. So they want you to just simply convert things. So this is my starting reagent. My starting reagent is CH3, CH2, CH2, COCl. So this is what I meant by the naming part. If you don't know how to name things, oh, oops, that's the wrong one. Um, if you don't know how to name things or come up with a structure from the name, then you're gonna struggle with these because they're not necessarily gonna give you everything. So you do need to figure it out from the beginning. So we want to convert one bromobutane. So we want to convert one bromobutane this is one bromobutane and we want to convert it to butanoyl chloride let's do it down here butanoyl chloride so they are pretty much just asking you how do I turn this how do I turn this guy into this guy okay so there are quite a few different ways of um, going about it so I this is where you need to know your flowchart um, you need to know all the reactions how you can interchange function group from one another and the, the tip that I'm gonna give you here is not don't just focus on oh, what do I go from here like what, what should I do there's so many possibilities which one should I do I would recommend you because you have got the start and you have got the finish you don't have to go you don't have to go um, start to finish you can work backwards as well you can instead of f figuring out what this is I'm gonna do this so to make an ethanol chloride the easiest way that I know is to use a carboxylic acid okay now remember like these CH3 CH2 CH2 they just they won't change they are just sitting there you will not change the number of carbons in the in your, in your molecules you're only changing the functional group so I'm is pretty much just changing the OH into CL and what do I need to make that happen I can just use SOCl2 that will you know change a carboxylic acid into COCl now what can I use to turn into a carboxylic acid oh hold on a minute so that means I need to have an alcohol here don't I so to turn into a carboxylic acid I need an alcohol so you just copy paste all of the other all the rest of the part oops the rest of the parts and then you just yeah oh, actually let's draw it this way so you can actually see the similarity there we go CH3 CH2 CH2OH so I can oxidize my primary alcohol into a carboxylic acid so that means this is an oxidation reaction so I can use potassium dichromate all right and then how do I turn the BR into OH this is where you use KOH Q okay so it's always the by far the easiest for me personally to work backwards um, because it's just you know because um, because with the BR you can turn into I mean it's pretty obvious you have to go to alcohol to carboxylic acid and to acid chloride but then you know on the exam condition then you know you, you're probably a little bit nervous and then if you normally can do this and then on the spot say like oh what do I do what do I do just calm yourself work backwards and you should be fine all right thanks Bob. Uh, use unknown S is a um, what is this? Is a branch chain molecule with the molecular formula C5H10O. So I'm going to highlight these. That's important. 
Now it read rapidly decolorized bromine water. So what does that mean? So I'm just going to make some notes as I go through these. Um, rapidly decolorizes water. So that means as an alkane. It exists as enantiomers. That means you have a chiral carbon. You have a chiral carbon, but not exists as cis and trans isomers. So that means <clears throat> it's it's the the two groups bonding to the C's. One of them is going to be the same. Um, reacts with acidified dichromate solution to form T. So which does not react with Benedict's reagent. So that means T is a ketone because you can see react with acidified dichromate solution that means this is an oxidation reaction so if it oxidizes that means this thing here is a secondary alcohol because if it was a primary alcohol you will oxidize into something that will react with the benedict solution which is the aldehyde okay um, now reacts with h2o h plus to form pro two products h v uh, sorry u and v and v is a major product okay so this is because we have the alkene here this is the major minor products all right so pretty straightforward so let's get into it um so how do we figure this out so we're gonna you can trial and error i think the easiest way to figure out this particular question is start with s um so we know two a few things about s s has a cc double bond s is a secondary alcohol and then this has no geometric isomers and then it has a chiral carbon so there are only so many molecules probably only one that fits a criteria that has a formula of c5h10o so let's just trial and error so the, the <laughs> I'll just show you my, I know this is not going to be right, but this is um, from experience. I know it's just not going to be a five carbon molecule. Um, I mean, you can try, so we can just try an error. So we know, let's go through the criteria. So it has a CC double bond. It has a secondary alcohol, secondary alcohol, the OH must be here. We can go in the mid, it can go in the middle. So let's just put it here. Let's just try an error. And then uh, where should I put the double bond? It can't fit, can it fit here? Yes, it can, if I fit here, um well that's not going to work because do i have a chiral carbon i don't have a chiral carbon so what is a chiral carbon chiral carbon is a carbon molecule carbon atom that's bonding to four different groups okay so this doesn't work why is that because this carbon is bonded to three h's that's not chiral carbon double bonded things can't be chiral carbons this carbon is bonded to two h's which is not it's not a chiral carbon it has to be bonded to four different things so this particular molecule is going to be wrong okay so i'm just you know it's going to take a little while as you can see questions like these i think are strictly excellent because this does take you a little while to figure it out but here's from experience i'm just going to go let's just draw now Something I tend to do if I know this and in that if there's a chiral carbon, I will just do the chiral carbon first. Okay, so we know, so we can do this. Let's just make the chiral carbon first. This is my chiral carbon. Now, what could I do here? I can put an H here. I can put an oh, I can put an OH here. I can put a CH three here, and I can put a C here, CH two, or C. Well, it doesn't matter. So as you can see, I, I haven't even looked at the alkene aspect. I haven't even looked at, well, I did look at the alcohol aspect, but I started with the chiral carbon. So I created the carbon that I know will be the chiral carbon because it's bonding to an H, it's bonding to an OH, it's bonding to a CH3, and it's bonding to a C that's bonding to something else. So this C definitely is not CH3. So I've got my chiral carbon right there, and then I can do the rest. Then I can do, all right, so where can I put the double bond? I can't put the double bond here, 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 here. That, that just won't work because I've identified that this carbon is my chiral carbon, so I can do the double bond here. All right, so I can do the double bond here. I can put a CH2 here, and I need how many carbons do I need? I need five carbons. I only got one, two, three, four, so I can put the carbon here. Okay, so that will be the molecule that I, you know, just deriving it from um, using the clues that they gave you. Now, if you sp tried my initial method, of which is just trialing, you know, trying to slot it in, it's going to take you a little while. So you just have to prioritize. You have, you, 
this just comes down from a bit of experience. You just need to know which of the clues is going to give you the biggest progress if you think about it. Like if you focus too much on the Owl King, no geometric isomers, that's not that's going to take you too long. So in this case, a chirocarbon is by far the easiest one to look at. So you can construct the molecule starting with the chirocarbon. Put the carbon in the middle, put you think about what you know you have. You you only have you only have um, carbons and hydrogens and oxygens. So how are you going to rearrange, how are you going to create a molecule that has a carbon that only uses carbons, H's and O's? So OH is one of them, a single H is one of them, a methyl group is one of them, and then just a carbon bonding to some H's or CH3's could be another one. And then we know that um, and then once you made it, you can go back and check. We have a carbon-carbon double bond right here. It has no geometric isomers, correct? Because this carbon is bonding to two H's, so that has no geometric isomers. It is a secondary alcohol because the OH is bonding to a carbon, which is bonding to two other carbons. And then it has a carbon. -carbon. Okay, so once you solve the first one, the, the rest is really easy now. Um, T is just T is just oxidized. If you could read the clues, um, oops. It's not going to be there anymore. Um, T is oxidized into a ketone, which is that. And what does U do? U and V are the major minor products. Okay, so V is the major product. So this is going to be pretty straightforward. So V is the V is the major product. Okay, so V is the major major. Let's just put it here before I forget. So that means you're adding water to this. So rich gets richer. So it's more likely for I'm just going to draw it this way so you can see. Um, so you can see what I'm doing here. So I'm adding water molecule into here. CH3 CH CH3 OH. You don't have to draw it this way. But I'm, I just, I'm just wanting I just want to show you how to what's happening here. So as you can see a lot of it, I keep saying to my year 13s every single year, it's just a lot of copy pasting. Year 13, year 12 is really overwhelming, but once you get to year 13, once you get the gist of it, it's just copy and pasting. So in this case, we're adding H2O, yeah? H2O slash H plus. That means you're just adding OH and you're adding an H. So the H for the major product, the H is going to go to the carbon that has more H's because if you compare these carbon, um, these two carbons that are underlined, the carbon on the left has more H's, so it's more likely going to get another H, and then the OH is going to go here. And then the other one is just the other way around, and then you're done. Okay, so that's question one sorted. Let's move on to question number two. All right, so one bromo propen tool exists as enantiomers optical isomers so this is the car carbon right here you can see it straight away draw the enantiomer of one bromo okay so you just draw the um just draw the ice um what do you call it the the, the enantiomers now it doesn't matter how you draw it like the first one you can draw it however you want you can do it whatever way you want it will make absolute no difference okay um, because at first they cannot mark you wrong on your first molecule because you can literally draw it however you want. I decided to draw it this way because why not? Oops, just good practice. I'm gonna put the H3 on this side, so it's CH3. Now, so if you draw it this way, you want to draw the mirror image of that. Okay, so you want to make, so if your OH is pointing up, this OH is gonna point up. The CH2Br is pointing to the right. That means your CH2Br is gonna to point to the left. And then your H is going this way. So that means your H is going to go this way. Your CH3 is gonna go that way. There you go. So these groups, like you may go, what if I put the OH on the bottom and put the H on top? It makes no difference. As long as you have got the mirror images, of the first one drawn correctly, then it's most likely, then it's just fine. All right, so we've done that. Why can one propyl blah, 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 exist as an antimers? Because it has a chirocarbon. Chirocarbon, all right? Chirocarbon is bonded to four different groups of atoms, which makes it a bit, which, which makes it um, what we call the chiral or asymmetric carbon atom, okay? And explain how you can distinguish them, you shine, they can rotate the plane or polarized lines in opposite directions. Okay, so here are some answers here. So carbon bonded to four different groups, 
enantiomers can be distinguished to rotate the poly plane of polarized lights in opposite directions okay so what that means is kind of like a magical phrase like a lot of people just memorize it without even understanding what it is um just really quickly you know how light if you do physics you should understand this a little bit better light goes in all sorts of directions and when you shine like say lights going all sort of crazy wavelength all sorts of everywhere around but then if you put a um, if you polarize them, so what it means if you put it uh, like say a slit like something in the middle that only allows light to go in this direction so all of the other light um, all the light wavelengths are being filtered out so only one particular wavelength so only this one goes in and then this is what we call the polarized light and then um, with with the um, two enantiomers, one rotated clockwise and one rotated anti-clockwise okay and you can you learn more about it in, in biochemistry at university um, especially with the amino acids and all that sort of stuff but that's not what we're looking at here let's look at this one three bottles containing colorless liquids have been incorrectly labeled you had one job and you can't label them um, the three color liquids are known so acid chloride butanoic acid butanoic develop a procedure usually using this 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 so we only allowed to use these you should include observation type reaction structural format okay so i'm just going to give you a quick rundown of how this works when you have um, butanoic chloride this is going to react with water okay because this is so reactive butanoic chloride is so reactive if you put water in what's going to happen is that this carbon is so electropositive it's going to love to hang out with some um, what we call nuclear files so it's going to kick out the cl and then get the oh in so this is a nucleophilic substitution so what it does is say get rid of the cl and then take in the oh and then you make carboxylic acid okay very vigorous reaction so you see white fumes of hcl gas um, produced and then if you if you feel acid chloride is very concentrated you also might hear some explosions okay so that's that one butanoic acid so this is where acid plus carbonate so you're going to use your na2co3 this is your butanoic oh, what, I, what else do I need? Observation, so white fume type reaction. This is uh, substitution, nuclear flick, nuclear flick substitution, and then structural formula. All right, done that. All right, butanoic acid. So this is acids and base. This is neutralization. So if you put Na2CO3 here, what's going to happen is that acid plus base gives you salt. Acid plus, well, acid plus carbonate gives you salt, gives you salt. Give you water give you carbon dioxide okay now we're going to make sure this is balanced because this is 2na so this is 2na this is 2 and that and then everything should be fine okay um so what type of reaction is this this is neutralization neutralization is it, and people look at this and go what is that you know c or an a it's the same thing as you add hcl to an aoh yeah uh, it's exactly like say if you do this HCl2 Na2CO3 like this is year 11 my year 11s can do this some of my year 10s can do this all right so you, what do you do you go you make the salt NaCl because the H gets donated and then they do their reactions and then you make that and you, and then you 2Na 2Cl 2HCl you know this is year 11 like, like like this is a salt can you see it's a leftover once you donate the H away it is a leftover combining with Na so same thing here this hydrogen that I'm highlighting right now this hydrogen has been you know reacted away so you have the Na reacting with the leftover which produces the salt so this is sodium butanoate okay last one butan 2O you can react this with the K amino 4 minus uh, sorry k amino 4 because it's you've got the k at the front um so this will react to um i can't be bothered doing the hydrogens um so you make a ketone so this is oxidation reaction and what are you going to see you're going to see purple to colorless okay and uh sorry this butanoic acid reaction you make co2 gas so you see bubbles there you go very straightforward um it obviously is a little bit harder when they limit what you can add um, but it's not that much harder okay so here's a um, the, the proper answers but you know it's you can just take a screenshot and pause and have a look at that it's pretty much the same thing I've uh, I talked about okay 
Next one, yay, flowcharts. Love flowchart questions. The reason I love flowchart questions is because you can you can write so little. Um, like just get it right, you get E. That's pretty much that. Um, pretty much that. All right. So we have propane ethanoid. So this is an ester. So straight away, whenever you make an ester, you need two components. All right, because it is a condensation reaction. Now this is what I always do. Yeah, I tell this to all my year thirteen that I teach every single year. Whenever you see an ester, whenever you see COO, blah blah blah, CON, blah blah blah, draw a line there, cut it there. Okay, just cut it along that line. So where is that line? COO, boom, cut it right next there. Uh, sorry, right next to that. Because when you cut it, you're gonna split it into the two um, re reagents that initially was used to make that particular thing. Okay, so what what is that? So I'm just gonna copy and paste right so ready so is so you know so high it's, um highly difficult just copy paste look i just split in half and just copy and paste it and then you need to ask yourself right so what do i need so this is obviously incomplete all right so look here can you see this is a, just a plot sign that plot sign means there's no catalyst if there's no catalyst that means you can make est you can make ester in two ways. You can use you can use carboxylic acid plus alcohol with um, acid, heat, reflux. You know the whole the whole thing. You can make ester, or you can make ester using acyl chloride plus um, alcohol. And the biggest difference here is that there's no need for catalyst. Or not doesn't mean there's no reaction. There's no need for catalyst, which is indicated here. So that means if I were to go back and complete the molecule, this is an acyl chloride, and this is a um, butane one mol, uh, a proper one mol. Okay. So that's so one is K, one is L. So obviously you can see this SOCl2 here. So that means a Cl was added in here. So that means Cl must go into this one. And what did we, what did we have to you know make this particular thing with SOCl two? So that means this must be COOH, and this must be CH three CH two CH two OH. Okay, so that's the top half done. Now we we use reagent one to make something else. We don't know then that reagent M reacted to make major product, major minor. What has major minor that you learned in year 12, year 13? Alkene. So this must be an alkene. So this is an alkene, without a doubt. And you may go, how do I know to put the OH here? Because I need to remove this OH. I remove this one of these H's and double bond here. So this is going to be conch H2SO4. Okay, so when you see major minor product, from an alcohol, you, the, you know, something reacted with something and produced a major minor product, that something must be an alkene from what you've learned in year 12 and year 13. Okay, all right, so this made the major products and then it reacted with something to make a ketone. So if that means, if that's a ketone, so that means this must be a secondary alcohol, which is that there. And then to make that, you use Cr two O seven two minus. To go back, you use NaBH four, and that's just part of the flow chart. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. I think the trickiest part is here to get this fully correct. There's no catalyst, all right? I, I every year I um, I give my kid, uh, my students lots of flow chart to do. I just draw them myself, and I leave that. I, I always um, put that bit in there because if there's no if it just says plus, there's no catalyst. That means you must have the acyl chloride. If if this says um, plus H plus and then heat and reflux, that means you would have got the carboxylic acid. Okay, so that's two different, um, a very very big clue, and this is why. For a question like this, and how, how I didn't write that much, and this is a full excellence answer. Okay, all right. Last one, question three. Question number three. So we are looking at looking at peptides. So circle one of the peptide. Okay, so that's you're just looking for C O and H. So just just that done. Um, using the draw the two possible dipeptides. So okay, again 
this is just copy pasting, all right? So you just copy paste, just put one on the left. Now I'm just gonna do it this way, because I want, because you know, the reason why you're here, you probably can't do a question like this, and I don't want to just to give you the straight answer. I just want to give you this first. All right, can you see this OH and one of the H's is gonna go bugger off, make water? So what's gonna happen is that this is gone, this is gone, and then what you have instead is this OH is gone, one of the H is gone, and then you, that goes to the N, and then you just copy paste everything else. C O O H. Just copy paste. It's literally <coughs> it's literally that. And when you want to draw the other one, it says two possible peptide dipeptides. So that means you put this one on the left. Right? So you do this one on the left. C O O H. I'm not gonna bother, I'm just gonna directly give you the answer. And then you put this one on the right. Yeah. So this is number one, this is number two. Very easy. Uh, compare and contrast the acidic basic hydrolysis of dipeptides shown here. Now, whenever you see a question like this, and when they say hydrolysis, so hydrolysis is breaking the thing down, yeah? So what's hydrolysis? See, remember what I said in the previous part, C-O-N, cut it there. When you cut it there, you are going to make two products. And what are you gonna do? Copy paste. This is where you wish you have control C, control V. Just, just copy paste. You don't like, look at what I'm doing. I'm not even adding anything. I'm not even doing any thinking at the moment. You know, you just add it in. And obviously this is incomplete and this is incomplete. And this is going to be your OH and this is going to be H. So these are your two starting material to make this particular uh, particular dipeptide. Now, what is a hydrolysis reaction? Hydrolysis, you just add water to break the large thing into two smaller things. And when you do acid hydrolysis, when you do acidic hydrolysis, you are going to, um, let's use a different color. I think some people don't like green. When you do acidic hydrolysis, yeah, you are going to make these. You're always going to make these products at the beginning. You're going to make these, all right? But in acidic condition, what it does is that the H plus will neutralize, will react with the base component. Okay, so if you look at over this side and look at this side, this is NH2. NH2 are your alkalines. They are um, amines, amines are acidic. Oh, sorry, amines, acidic. amines are basic and they will react with the acidic condition. So you literally just have to do one extra step. They gain another hydrogen because that's what it does. The acid will react with this and will react with this. And then the rest, what do you do? You just copy paste. All right, because on the right hand side, on the right hand side, this is the carboxylic acid side, this is the acidic side, they don't react with acids. So if you, so this is one con, one of the re, uh, products, and then this is the other one, you just copy paste. Literally no skill involved. You just need to be able to identify that in acidic condition, you just neutralize the base side, so they would gain another H plus because what is what acidic condition means you have lots of H pluses. And then if you were to do basic condition, you just do the opposite. Your hydrogens aren't gonna do any, sorry, nitrogens, amines not gonna do anything now. But then if you look at the other side, if you have the acid react with the base, your acid will just lose the H plus. Okay, and then the other one is exactly the same thing, NH2, CH, copy everything else. There's, that's why a lot of my year 13 actually say they feel year 13 organics is easier. Because I mean, look, look at how hard is this first step? That shouldn't be too hard. You break it in the middle, copy paste, complete it. And once you completed it, look at the acidic condition, look at the basic condition, identify which one's acidic, which one's basic on your molecules. And then if, it, if you're reacting with the acidic condition, you just add an H plus to the nitrogens. If it's basic condition, you just remove an H plus from your carboxylic acid ends. Okay, so hopefully that, that should do it. So just by definition, hydrolysis, you add water to break 
molecules from one large thing to two smaller things and then a certain con basic condition and then you know you can heat it up to make it quicker so that's not really the emphasis here this is the last one almost the last one all right now draw the structure formula of the tri but just go back here i cannot emphasize how important this step is all right again just see when you see coo or con when when they say like hydrolysis break it down just cut it there cut it and then copy and then complete it and then you will need to do stuff with that later on okay all right well, i think this is the last part now draw the structural formula blah 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 so this is glycerol and uh, palmitic acid so this is looking at making uh, making an ester so well you need three of these so what you do here now it is a little bit trickier when they draw it like this so let's just revert it i'm just gonna reverse it and i'm gonna put it other way around i'm gonna do it like this all right so let's forget about this let's use this one it's the same thing can you see this oh and this h is going to react this oh and this h is going to react this oh and this h is going to react so what it does is simply going to undergo as um, condensation reaction three times all right so this o is this the, you can think of this o is this o this o is this o this o is this o and then you just completely copy paste <laughs> You just add everything that you saw on the right hand side and just add it in. Okay, so you just literally do it three times. And if you get if you're having trouble with questions like this, I will suggest you just break it out. Just do one at a time. Just do this. Just do CH2OH plus H O O C blah 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 blah. And then you're gonna go like, oh, it's actually just, you know alcohol carboxylic acid i make an ester and then you just copy and then the next part you just do exactly the same thing copy paste all right you explain why this is a condensation reaction the condensation reaction it's just condensation reaction is when you combine two smaller molecules join smaller molecules join together to make large molecules and then why is it condensation because when you whenever you see condensation you see water so the h2o is being eliminated all right and this is the last one how long is this video going to be uh, let's have a look uh oh, geez 40 minutes All right um triglyceride from blah can be hydro uh, hydrolyzed uh, by heating under reflux and basically outline the advantage of heating under reef uh, this is just what is reflux so this is requires you to understand what reflux is um so if you look at the diagram of a reflux reflux is you know i can't draw but this is close as i can get um that looks like a measuring cylinder um, you can just look it up on a on a reflux um, diagram so what reflux does think of um i always um use the analogy of a pressure cooker um pressure cooker is like um you know you you can you can cook meat really quickly you can cook anything really quickly with a high amount of pressure high amount of heat and that does the same thing with the with the with the reflux because it's a closed system nothing leaves so what it does is that you you will you anything that reacts you will condensate you will become gaseous and then when you get to the top so let me i should really be able to find um can i find a uh I try to draw it oh that's gonna be tricky um but you have the condenser here you have water in water out and then this is connected to your to your flask and this is has a cap so nothing goes in there's the best diagram I can do just just bear with me on a, on a tablet it's horrible so what you do you heat you heat this up so what happens is that this is going to react yeah and anything that's volatile will rise to the top but this part is this part is the condenser this is a condenser the condenser means is that it's cool this part is really cold and then when your gas gets here face get to the cold temperature you will fall back you go you become a liquid and fall back down okay so it just means it's kind of like uh, you're letting the gas to react vaporize and then you have the remaining unreacted stuff sitting in here and they are more likely going to collide with each other okay so you just don't lose anything because this is a closed system um, these two inlets and outlets this is just for the water to go in and out um, for the condenser to remain cool okay so here it is so it is an advantage because all the volatile stuff 
volatile just means it's easy to turn to gas it um, turn to gas um, and then go back to liquid when it gets to the condenser and then it allows the reaction to go to completion and you don't lose anything okay so that means you have more um, products which means more yields is what we say um, at a higher level um, because at university labs you actually have to calculate your yield because if you if you if after a practical lab if your yield is like below 20 percent then you failed because you've done something wrong okay so this is the organic paper um if you ask me very very fair no really surprise questions everything seems pretty um, standard and i do hope it really helped you um but organics is one of the least predictable examinations because they can do to can i can write 10 different versions of organic if you ask me because there's just so many concepts that i can ask in many different ways but then the concept itself is exactly the same okay so hopefully this has been helpful um so like always leave a like and subscribe if you haven't and i'll see you guys next time Bye bye